Welcome to 401 Sunset, where we bring you to you, Windsor. I'm your host, Count Sabelli, and this is 401 Sunset, our Halloween special. <laughs> Tonight, we have a great interview with Glass Monkey Studios, Tony Gray. Then, oh, 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 oh. let's go to Tony, Tony Gray. I'm Tony Gray. I'm the owner of Glass Monkey Studios, and we're at Glass Monkey Studios right now. This is where we. This is where I work. This is where uh, all the conduits action happens right here on the drafting table. So, what exactly is Glass Monkey Studios then? Well, Glass Monkey Studios. It's crazy because it was initially set up um, by a good friend of mine, who's a legend in the industry, of course, uh, David Finch. Uh, he's worked on all kinds of Marvel titles. This man touches shoots through the roof sales-wise. He's one of the top artists on the planet. And of course, he's from this area. So we decided that we were gonna set up a studio here. It got us away from our comic book work. We were gonna start shooting films and get involved in like packaging designs. So we, we started working on things like that. Um, and it was really just, let's branch out, let's get away from doing comic book stuff. Um, as it turns out, it, during the, the process of setting up Glass Monkey Studios, he ended up signing an exclusive deal with uh, with DC and he moved on. Next thing you know, everything that is being done out of here, instead of doing uh, videos and uh, 3D modeling for, for gaming, everybody comes to us and says, they, they ask for comic books. <laughs> what began as this thing with Dave and I to, to branch out in case the comic stuff ever started slowing down, in fact, it uh, multiplied itself so that Glass Monkey is almost exclusively doing comic books now. We had a different name in, intended. At the last minute, our lawyer called and couldn't get in touch with me, but was able to get in touch with Dave. The name that you've chosen is already used, and he said, come up with something fast. So he said, well, what about Glass Monkey? So why did you choose Glass Monkey? And he said, well, from the Beastie Boys. So I said, that's not even Glass Monkey. That's Brass Monkey. But we got stuck with Glass Monkey anyways, and it seems to work, so that's fine. I don't just like local talent, I just like talent, and it happens that Southwestern Ontario has a ton of it. The Dave Finches, Jeff Lemire's, the Jay Favox. I needed a, a youth title, and I really wanted something that uh, appealed to young women and young girls. I could, I could hire a writer, I could do it myself, but like, I'm not going to pretend that I know what a 14-year-old girl like. I want to find a woman who, who's young and who understands this stuff. Two years bouncing around looking for somebody. I do the uh, local Windsor Con. Not 20 feet away from me is April Faller. After traveling all over the place looking for someone, right here in Windsor, I find someone who's who's doing comic books, and we, you know, I hired her like right off the bat. So much talent that's kicking around here. As soon as I opened the doors to this place, I started getting people coming in. Guys like David Martin, uh, Cassandra Giles, Eliana Clementi. These are all people that have, you know gone through the school systems here. They pop up and they show up with, with dynamite work all the time. It makes it so easy that this is a, an area, such a hotbed for comic book talent. Uh, is there anything that I haven't brought up that you'd like those that are watching this uh, to know about? Um, there's a new Glass Monkey online store. So if, for example, our books aren't showing up in a convenience store close to you, you can go to glassmonkeystore.com and download digital uh, copies of all our books. Find whatever comics you want for a buck, download them, you get a PDF copy, you know, read them anytime, anywhere. Read these crazy comics and these fun comics are what we hope are fun comics for everybody. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to do this. Now, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Every day is wonderful. I don't lead a hard life, man. Drawing little guys beating each other up, they're, they're tougher lives. I, I appreciate you coming out. Speaking of superheroes, did you know I was the original Batman? I'm not scared of anything like that Bruce Wayne character. Ugh. <laughs> Garlic! <laughs> Halloween is coming and time to cheer, so let's go to the Crooked Kilt and have yourself a beer. from 401 Sunset. We're here at the Crooked Kilt talking to the owner. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and the bar? 
Um, the Crooked Kilt uh, is like a student pub located on 2135 Wyandotte Street West. Uh, we cater to mostly uh, University of Windsor students, but also cater to a lot of the local surrounding customers from around the West End, mostly. And me, uh, graduate of the University of Windsor and never left. And this is my passion. Okay. Uh, what would you say is your busiest night? Uh, tomorrow night. Thursdays historically have been our busy night. Uh, not sure why. It's just been the pub night in general where most students like to let loose and have fun. And what usually goes on here on Thursdays? Um, just a busy time. A lot of students uh, socializing, having fun, uh, hanging out with friends or watching the sporting event or whatever may be on television at that night. But just a meeting place for everyone to grab a bite to eat and uh, have some fun. Can you tell us about what your specials are, what food's popular, what nights? Um, we have a $5 lunch special every day from noon to 4, so trying to keep it basically um, a low cost for a lot of the students. Uh, all ranges from wraps, burgers, um, deep fried pickles that are a favorite just for a reasonable price. Um, every other day there's either two for one wings or wrap specials or appetizer specials all throughout the week. Uh, Thursdays we have cheaper pitchers. Uh, every day there's some sort of drink and food special uh, going on and uh, we try to cater to all different crowds. Like obviously students are the primary focus, but we like to make sure that we focus on like all types of crowds that want to come in. A lot of families for the two for one wing days, not just students, uh, take out, things like that. So we really want to try and push the food aspect as well as the nightlife that we have going on here. Awesome. Uh, you guys also have a new music DJ system at the back? Uh, yeah, actually. Um, Thursday nights it's great and we've uh, expanded to do different kinds of parties as well. Uh, we had a black light party, the first one that we've had. Uh, we have a fundraiser coming up called Bras for Boobies where uh, girls will design a bra and we'll have a fashion show and all the proceeds from the sale of the bras go to uh, the cancer uh, research for breast cancer awareness. And I'm trying to think of other fun events we have coming up, Halloween parties, and we cater to a lot of student groups to throw parties here as well as fundraisers and things like that. So uh, we cater a lot of birthdays as well. Um, if you let us know in advance, if you'd like to throw a birthday party for someone, um, we decorate uh, the kilt with balloons, streamers, things of that nature, and try to create an atmosphere uh, for fun. We put the jukebox on to uh, cater towards the music and things like that. Uh, a lot of like Bon Voyage parties as well for international students that are finishing up their term at the university and going back home. Um, yeah, there's like all sorts of things that can be done here, or at least we try to wear many hats to accommodate all the different students and groups that we get in. So uh, you've allowed us to film here and you've had other student groups filming projects here as well. Uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Uh, yeah, uh, basically if um, a lot of student groups are doing different projects and things like that, like an interview for 401 Sunset or we have a student group also working on a film project for class projects. Uh, all kinds of different things we allow here as well. Uh, we had student groups actually built our website and we had other student groups for class projects. Um, do case studies on um, different trends around the area, what students are looking for in establishments, what kind of things like that. So we're very open to a lot of the student groups and trying to accommodate them as best we can. That's awesome. Uh, a lot of students uh, take liberties to have some fun around when they are socializing. Things will happen and uh, yeah, we're just uh, trying to cater a safe and uh, fun crowd that people want to come back again and again. Thank you very, very much. Thank you so much for the interview, taking time out of your busy day to have this interview with us. And uh, we really appreciate it. Back to you in studio. I wonder if the kilt has AB positive. Our next segment though is a delicious one indeed. We go to the Windsor's annual blood drive. Hmm. What we're asking, because we've seen record numbers of no-shows and cancellations, we're asking people, if you do have an appointment, bring a friend with you. We find that, especially with new donors, having a friend with you really helps ease the anxiety. There's always a level of anxiety with anything new you do. So if you can bring a friend with you and make it fun, 
you know, we encourage that when you come to uh, come to any of our clinics and we get more donors in the process. The reason I'm donating blood is just to help other people. It just benefits other people. And your blood can be used for different ways, uh, not just emergency, also long term. Well, in my opinion, donating blood is a really simple process, and it does make a huge difference in someone's life. Uh, one unit of blood can save up to three lives, so it's just uh, one thing I like to do every 56, 56 days that you can donate to just make a difference. It's very like self-rewarding to donate blood. Uh, actually, when you donate for the first time, you'll get an email from us which explains what your blood type is, um, how rare or how common it is, what the demand is, and how many lives you could potentially, could potentially be affected by your unit of blood. And we find that that's really, it, it brings the need home to a lot of these first time donors. They realize that, um, you know what, their donations count, they matter, and we need them to keep coming back in order for us to supply the hospitals with the, this life-saving blood that they need for patients in need. Our regulations for donating blood are very strict. We're regulated by Health Canada, but it's one of the reasons that we have one of the safest blood systems in the world. Health Canada um, almost puts a safety net over any sort of potential risk out there. Um, for instance, um, tattoos and piercings, you have to wait six months. Um, and the reason for that is there is a chance of contracting hepatitis C. It's an unregulated industry. So in order for us to make sure that the blood system is safe, we ensure that you have to, you have to wait six months before you can donate. We had to cancel our, our clinic here on the 15th um, because of the strike. Um, not because we, wanted, we didn't want to cross picket lines, but because there would be no students on on site. So therefore, we lost and are down 86 units. We really count on our uh, post-secondary education clinics to, you know, they're just so, everyone here is just so giving and we usually do very well. So that really, you know, put us down 86 units for the month. Well, when they come here, it's much easier for me to donate blood because of transportation and also like time. I don't have a lot of time because of school. So it's, yeah, it is very convenient. When Cancer patients are the biggest users of blood and blood products. Cancer patients themselves can use up to five units every week. So that's five donors coming in to donate for that one patient in need. Uh, leukemia patients can use up to eight units every week. So you can see how that really adds up and why we need the, the donors to come in. I feel fine. Everyone feels different, but for the most part, uh, the first couple times donating blood was a little tough but I got used to it in time and now it's just kind of a regular thing. It's no big deal. It actually feels really good, but the first time I did it, I was super nervous. I was so anxious and like, I, yeah, I just got that adrenaline rush, but the, now I do it, I almost feel like a superhero. <laughs> like someone told me, Avengers got nothing on me. <laughs> We're here every month at the University of Windsor. Our next clinics are on November 13th from 10 till 1 and November 18th from 1 till 4. Walk-ins are welcome, please come in. Uh, you can book your appointment by calling one 888 donate or you can go online at www.blood.ca or we have this great new uh, app called the Give Blood app that's available at the App Store or on Google Play. Thank you all to our delicious, I mean, uh, generous donors at the University of Windsor Blood Drive. Our next guest, is a clarion. Clarion is it's a fun group because you have the clarinet with Becky, you have the accordion with Dave. Why did you want to bring these two instruments together? It was a marriage of convenience. I didn't want to just play with other instrumentalists that you would expect to perform with. Neither of us envisioned accordion and clarinet being our life's work. We no. didn't think that we were going to play it, with each other for, you know, many years. They essentially to play with me on a recital at the University of Toronto while finishing uh, our Master of Music degrees there. Um, I asked her professor, uh, I said, can you find me the best clarinet player in this room? He says to me, he goes, there's two people here I'd recommend. And he points to Becky and he points to this other gentlemen. The guy is talking to someone, so I'll just go and ask her first. I'm very glad. Imagine just... if you'd picked him, you would have gotten a great recital, but that's it. The relationship ends there. You got me now for life. 
So sometimes I don't know if that's uh, <laughs> everything we've ever done since musically. Becky holds her own on the concert stage and can keep up with anything I do, whether it's uh, playing music mm -hmm. or yeah. that's why it's, it's a true. match made in heaven. Have you guys ever worked with large orchestra or have you always just focused on just trying to better yourselves and your music? As a Claire, and we've been focusing primarily on the two of us, but recently we have branched out. David's actually just written a piece for us in orchestra. You have great banter back and forth. Is that something that you like to bring to any concert you do? No, absolutely. You have to make the audience feel comfortable. And we like to almost think of it as no matter where we are playing, what kind of venue we're playing, we almost want the audience to feel like they are in our living room, you know, having like a more intimate concert with us right there. We like to have that direct interaction, and, uh, make the audience a part of what we do. Well, we feed off that energy, right? I mean, and so when you put all that together, it's like this high energy orchestra reduced to two. We've traveled the world with our music. We have recorded CDs. We've heard ourselves on the radio um, countless times. You could be driving along and all of a sudden you turn on CBC radio and there you are. And those rewards are so great that anyone who's passionate and works hard enough will have that same success. So young kids should just keep the inspiration flowing by, by working hard at their craft and getting better and better and better. <laughs> Do visit us at www.aclarion.ca. Aclarion, breathing new life into classical music. Awesome, well great, thanks a lot. And uh, you know, let's, let's look forward to the, the concert coming up. Thank you very much. Thank you. Welcome back to 401 Sunset. I'm here with Dave and Becky, the duet of Aclarion. How are you guys doing? Great. That's awesome. So what have you guys been doing for the past week? Oh, it's been pretty busy, actually. We've done a school concert, a senior outreach concert, and uh, we also did a performance uh, at the Scarab Club as part of uh, the chamber music series there. And uh, we debuted a piece, actually, that David wrote for the two of us and the piano trio. So that's accordion, clarinet, piano, cello, and violin. Yeah, we called it uh, Bach to the Future, <laughs> kind of uh, a play on what would happen if you took uh, the sounds of the old classical period, the Baroque period of music in the 1700s, and mixed it in with modern sounds and piazzolla tangos and, and more uh, modern harmonies, and you get a pretty cool sounding piece. It was fun to do. All those concerts were in Detroit, so it was our first chance since moving to Windsor to get to play out in Detroit, and three times in one week was quite hectic. <laughs> That, that's awesome. I mean, like, it sounds like you guys have an awesome variety of music and everything. Where can our viewers, you know, find your stuff, like find more about Eclarion? Okay, well, we have uh, two CDs out right now on iTunes and also on our website. The, the website is www.eclarion.ca. And uh, yeah, this was our first CD that we did. Um, it's got a great eclectic mix of uh, both con some contemporary music, some classical music, tangos, yeah. and some pieces that David wrote as well for us. And then this one gets a little more adventurous. Uh, There's actually a piece on the second CD, What If. The CD is called What If, kind of a, as a play mm -hmm. on inside. There's um, some text there that talks about what if the arts, imagine the arts were actually um, what treated the way other professions in society are and given the same accolades and the same recognition. Mm -hmm. Imagine a world where people respected the work of the arts and the artists uh, as much as we do our engineers and our mm -hmm. scientists and our uh, athletes and all that. So that's kind of what the album's whole theme is. But in there, there's a piece that Becky uh, plays four parts all by herself. We multi-tracked it, so she's playing like bass clarinet and the regular clarinet, one part after yeah, the other. I get to play harmony, finally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it comes out pretty cool sounding. It sounds like five musicians were jamming together, but it was really just two. Yeah, That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, there's a piece uh, for us and piano on here too, and for us and harp. Yeah. So and we're working on our third CD right now. Nice. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when, when is that CD expected to be like done by or completed? Uh, likely for early 2015. Um, yeah, we it'll we be keep done, finding new pieces that we want to include on it. That's so. it. Some of the yeah. music's been recorded already and then you kind of take a direction for the project and then all of a sudden you discover something new or I've written something new yeah. and all of a sudden you just want to revisit the whole thing. So the CD has kind of gone through we have enough material probably for two or three CDs now mm -hmm. and we just have to kind of 
hone in on what we're going to include. Yep. So. And uh, we have one a single out already from that CD uh, called The Twilight of Shadows, which again is a piece that David wrote for the two of us. So yeah. that one is available um, on CD Baby. And through uh, and iTunes yeah. and uh, through our website again. So, yeah, and we have a YouTube channel where you can see some of our music videos. Cla what classical music <laughs> videos? It's kind of uh, a cool thing to see because we're experimenting with the green screen effects and and yeah. things like that, at which most classical musicians play it pretty straight. And our mm -hmm. whole our whole shtick is to make classical music more fun for audiences who yeah. otherwise wouldn't go to that kind of a concert. So we have like humor, we bring out costumes there. I know it's <laughs> Halloween and you're all dressed up. So we bring out our, our different. Uh, so yes, we even have classical wigs. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, you so know, for when we need the spirit of uh, Mozart. And it does transform To help you. us out. You, you it does. This you put this on <laughs> and then. You play a concert you, and yes. you feel like better. Mozart this or Beethoven. Is, this is how we you. get through playing the Marriage of Figaro Overture with just <laughs> two instruments instead of an entire orchestra. And yeah, I mean, I like to dress up. So I come along and uh, for our school concerts, especially, um, I like to dress up as a bee <laughs> and uh, buzz around for our flight of the funky bee, which is our take on Rimsky Korsakoff's flight of the bumblebee. Yeah, the kids yeah. dig that. Actually, the adults do too. We've done that in a few of our adult shows. Uh, yeah. Right after intermission, she comes out on stage and starts the flight of the bumblebee exactly. and the audience yeah. is just in stitches because classical musicians tend to be a little conservative in how they present their, yeah. their music. So we're trying, what we're trying to do is to make music at the highest level musically that's mm -hmm. that's comparable to what you're hearing with symphony orchestras and with string quartets but we're bringing a little humor to the concert yeah. so we don't take ourselves so seriously on stage we don't dress in uh you know tuxedos and and take curtsies and bows we just kind of talk to the audience and with them and yeah. and that's fun. yeah and that's yeah. what makes like the live concert uh such a fun thing to go to mm -hmm. um it's different than just listening to your music on a cd because um you get to see all this other stuff that you might not normally get to see i mean we save it in concerts but uh, i have david pull you're out not, the you're not doing that now <laughs> avidos villanis oh, hat <laughs> and we dance the tango on stage no, with Matt, him on the accordion Matt, what she does is she puts this hat on my head and then <laughs> and then sticks this sticks that <laughs> right in, in his teeth, teeth in front and then of the we audience. tango <laughs> after she promised me before the concert started that she wouldn't do it she goes into her bag of tricks and once that's happened i'm committed to yeah, having to improv rules so i right? get up with my accordion <laughs> and we dance the tango on stage with me wearing my 40 pound accordion it's and, great and i even dip her with the accordion it's it's great but you can only see it at a live aclarion concert so. when it, when is the next live aclarion um our next uh concert is happening at the art house of detroit mm -hmm. um and that's on december the 6th at 4 p.m so it's a saturday performance uh so it's great if you've had enough of christmas shop already then you can come and relax at an Aquarian concert um, so the tickets uh, for that concert they're $35 okay. and uh, they're available in advance through the Art House of Detroit um, or you can pay at the door as well and all of our dates I mean we have a pretty um, pretty active website so you can mm -hmm. check out our concert dates uh, music downloads there's articles yeah. on us there's all that kind of stuff um, and all and of that is at aclarian.ca so that's A C C L A R I O N dot C A. Okay, perfect. Well, I'm really excited to hear you guys play in studio. Uh, let's uh, let's see a clarion play uh, play some music. Ladies and gentlemen, a clarion.
over, Sibeli. Ah! Oh, what the world? Tune in next time on 401 Sunset. Goodbye.